What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, we got a very special guest. I had to pull out my phone real quick just to read these accolades. Four-time WNBA champion, 11-time WNBA All-Star, five-time first team, three-time assist leader, two-time peak performer, WNBA top 15 players of all time, top 20 at 20, all-decade team, two-time NCAA champion, future Hall of Famer, Suburb. I got clapped up for that. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. How you feeling? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing great, you know, appreciate you taking the time out, um, especially as it's June. So, you know, it's Pride Month and I couldn't think of somebody better to have a conversation with about the month than you. So, yeah, let's get into it. So what's like, talk about like the importance of Pride Month and like the strides that society has taken when it comes to like equal rights for the community. Yeah, um, well, obviously it's super important because we're still in a place in our world where you know things aren't equal and you have to shine light and you have to take time out to have months to dedicate you know to different things in our society that aren't equal to the, to the groups that are marginalized and obviously this month happens to be pride month but we can yeah. talk about so many groups that are marginalized and why it's really important to take that time to shine the light um, i think what we're all hoping we get to is a point where we don't need these months Exactly. Now where it's just kind of, it is what it is all year round. But mm -hmm. until then, um, we're definitely going to take these moments to, uh, like I said, shine that light and push the conversation forward. For sure. So what are those steps you think are needed to, uh, like you said, just for it to become normal instead of like having a month to really like recognize and just show love, you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously <laughs> what we're talking about is deep. You know what I mean? Like it go, it's 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 years, hundreds of years, thousands of years of you know oppression and things like that, and not being able to be treated equally, from from a standpoint of being gay, not being able to just love who you want without being, mm -hmm. you know, criticized or marginalized or it held against you. Um, so what we're talking about isn't like an easy fix, right? You no, know? it's like, like everybody landed on in their heels. And that's exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just basically, I mean, sometimes it's as small as, you know, everybody in their own way, in their own life, just kind of making those changes, whether it's in the language you use surrounding the LGBT community, um, the way in which you treat people like in your day-to-day -day life, those things can actually go probably the longest. And then hopefully that does result in, in larger change. For sure. And I want to talk about like the dynamic between like sports, because you know, sometimes people don't really reveal whether they're gay or not, while they're playing until it's like after the fact. So what do you think needs to happen where it's just like normal, where I, you know, someone could say, you know, I'm bi or whatever the case may be and not get looked at different in the locker room or whatever the case may be? Yeah, I mean, you know, sadly, I think it's it's more of an issue in, in, in male sports, you mm -hmm. know? Um, we kind of talk about, by, by we, I mean myself, my fiance, Megan, um, you know, she, she came out yeah shout out Megan she <laughs> came out like I don't even know 10 plus years ago yeah. I came out just um four years ago mm -hmm. and even in that short period of time right like for her it was a, it was a huge deal because because of, of the you know it was like the early 2000s or maybe mid 2000s for yeah. me it was like still a big of a deal like I still had to say it but now you fast forward my teammate Brianna Stewart she never actually had to come out in right. a good way like she just was living her life. She was like, this is who I'm engaged to. This is what it is. And everybody was like, cool. But what we're, what we're not seeing that is in male sports. Right. So, you know, there's still some, some hurdles and there's still reasons why, you know, people have to come out. People always ask like, oh, when's the day when we don't have to? Well, until, you know, it's, it's socially acceptable mm -hmm. everywhere, athletes and, and really everybody are still gonna have to take that moment to come out because you know, it's not the norm to just be like you said, like, yo, this is what's up. This is who I'm dating. And that is what it is. Yeah. Cause I remember when my sister told me she was gay and I was like, all right. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and even today where sometimes like there's like a big announcement or media picks it up and I'm just like, it, I feel like it's just not necessary. At least in my eyes, it's not necessary because it's such a normal part of life, like breathing where there's people who are different and maybe they are not. And it shouldn't really affect how you you know move around and live your life so yeah that's how that's, i mean those are my thoughts about it yeah um, credit to credit to probably the people you 
or like in your circle. That's how I feel too. Like in my life, being gay is not a big deal. Yeah. Because I feel like we probably hang out with similar people that are like open-minded, like they're with it. But sadly, you know, as we all know, that's not the case for for so many, so many others. Um, so that's why we got to keep keep doing it. For sure. And then WNBA, I feel like they're always the first to champion a lot of social issues. Like I remember, it might have been last week, and you guys were in t-shirts with like a uh, George Floyd like uh, legislation that we all want to happen. So speak about speak about why there's just such at the forefront of these things compared to like all the other major American sports. Yeah. Um, well, first and foremost, it's like as athletes, mm -hmm. you know, not, not just WNBA, like every athlete, male, female, we're so unique because we always have live mics in front of us. You know, not everybody gets that opportunity to have the live mic and that could be good or bad. <laughs> but, you know, for us, I think when we have the live mic, when we have the platform, we do try to make the most of it because our league, the representation of it, you know, the makeup of it, it's really a lot of these marginalized groups we're talking about. Right. I, I want to say our league is 75, 80 percent black. Mm -hmm. um, we have players who have come out as trans, non-binary. We've got a large percentage who are in the LGBTQ community. Um, so we kind of, and we're women. So we kind of make up all of these different marginalized groups. And I think with that, you know, I always joke in a way, like we've never been allowed to just, you know, quote, shut up and dribble. Yeah. Like we've never been allowed to just play our sport and like be great and be acknowledged for the things we do on the court. Um, it's always been about, you know, what we look like, how tight our uniforms are, you know, all the other, you know, all the other things aside from basketball. So I think with that over time, we've really had to just develop this, this trait, this backbone about us. Yeah. And what we learn is the more we speak up, we can see things are changing. And now we've gotten to a point where we don't want to just speak up for ourselves. We want to lend that voice to others as sure. well. I think that's kind of been a little bit of the evolution. Um, and to be honest, with this younger like crop, like this younger generation of players, like they're definitely not shut up and dribble in like all the good ways. <laughs> like they're coming in hot. You know, they've even pushed me in a lot of ways and in, in, in a lot of good ways to, to, to be more vocal and to talk about things. Um, so I think the WNBA is in, in great hands as it pertains to just the social justice and us using our platform. Definitely. And uh, last question for you. I want to talk about how with the WNBA and we always compare about like the salaries and things like that compared to like the NBA. Yeah. So I remember us talking to Candace about it. So what are some steps that you think are necessary for it to kind of like close that gap? Cause I think of, you know, just like coverage and even like going on YouTube, watching highlights where it's a little harder just to find like regular game highlights of a specific player yeah. that you like. And just like those little small things. So what are some, steps you think that needs to happen for it to for that gap to kind of close yeah um yeah i'm glad you brought this up because i think um what happens is a lot of times people hear women and female athletes say things like equal pay and they just assume we mean like oh i should be getting the same as chris paul just because i play the same sport and that's not that's not what we're saying at all like mm -hmm. i think everybody understands that the world of basketball when you talk about the NBA, the W, like these are businesses, right? Yeah. And businesses need like revenue and they need media coverage and all those things. What we talk about when we talk about like equal pay is more so the equity side of it mm -hmm. and like getting the opportunity to get paid in those ways. Yeah. And to me, that starts with media coverage. I mean, you brought up like trying to find highlights, impossible, trying to find stats, impossible. Trying to find anything, you know, WNBA related can be really hard. Even apparel can be hard. So just these, these little subtle, like nuanced things are so, they go so far and it's so important to change how people look at us, you mm -hmm. know, because I think they, they kind of look down on us because of, of things like that. So to me, it's all of what I just said, media coverage for sure. And then corporate sponsorships. We need these businesses to look at us as investments the same way they did the MBA, you know, 50 years ago and not like this charitable contribution where they're just going to give us money. Oh, it's pride month here. Yeah. We'll give you, you know, a couple of whatever hundred thousand dollars to say right. that we kept the box. Like we don't want that. We yeah. want to be invested in as a business as well. And yeah. then hopefully down the line, however many years it takes, you know, we get to that point of growth. So that's, that's kind of how I see it. And even like the merchandise too, where as far as to find like, 
you know, the players around the W, just their jerseys, things like that. Like, even for me, I try to find those WNBA socks that you all playing because I like them better than just like regular socks. <laughs> it's so hard to find. Like, I can't even go to, let's say, like a Nike side or outside of like the WNBA side to find them. So I feel like those little things that do a lot once they're, like, you know, they're accessible to people, because I'm sure people want to buy it like I want to buy it, so. Yeah, absolutely. And then, or if you do find it, they probably only had, like, five in stock to start with, and they're already sold out. It's like, exactly. we, need, we just need more. We need more. Mm -hmm. Cool, but, I mean, that's the last question I got for you. Um, again, thank you for the time. I'll let you have the closing words, so. You, I, I get the closing words? Yeah, you got the closing. You're the boss, so. <laughs> the boss. I like how you call me the boss. I like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> not just way. Um, no, thank you so much for having me. I'm glad this this worked out. Um, it is Pride Month, so yeah. everyone can, can you know, take this opportunity to, you know, spread love as always. Maybe, um, I always say that when people ask about, you know, the quote unquote work that the mm -hmm. WBA is doing, to me, the biggest part of it is educating yourself, getting as knowledgeable as possible, on right. some of these topics. So I always challenge people to do that. Um, but more than anything, happy pride. Happy pride. And make sure I mean everybody go check out the Seattle Storm. When's your next game? Um, I'm like, what's today? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Two days from now. <laughs> Two days from now, everybody go check it out. Um, which actually means the day this goes live on Friday. So oh, Friday. Check it out today. Yeah, Friday. My game's so today. Tomorrow, so Saturday. Yes. Game is today. Everybody go check it out. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you again, Sue. Yeah, no